Okay, we're back for just one more video with one example of, of this NVA2 isogeny. What we did, remember, was uh, we started from um, short exact sequence given by an isogeny. From that, we extracted a long exact sequence using cohomology. From that, we extracted a short exact sequence between the Mordavivay group, H1s going into E5, and H1s going into E. There, we realize that we can define a Selmer group, which gives us uh, cohomology classes that are locally, uh, that, that map to a trivial uh, class in some cohomology group locally. Great. Then we had an exact sequence, we extracted an exact sequence between the Wickham the Mordelvay group, a uh, Selmer, a uh, Phi Selmer, and uh, the Phi torsion of Shah. We wanted to identify what those things are. And what we did is um, show, well, we didn't show it in this class, it's on Silverman, that H1 there, those can be identified as a homogeneous spaces, some spaces, and uh, the homogeneous spaces locally are in the trivial class, even only if there are points locally. So what we're looking for is how to convert those classes in particular. Great. So what we did here in this uh, concrete example of a, this, of a two isogeny, uh, as it's on the screen, in this two isogeny, we want to compute what the Selmer group is in this very particular case. So in the phi, uh, the phi Selmer group, it turns out it can be computed as, well, exactly as a set of homogeneous spaces that are locally non-trivial everywhere. Okay, so those homogeneous spaces that have uh, local solutions everywhere, those will be the uh, Selmer group. And through all this machinery, we can identify them as a subgroup of classes modulo squares and are precisely those classes modulo squares that are um, that the, what we've defined the KS2 several times using these primes. Okay, so we have this map to compute what comes from Mordell Bay group and what doesn't. Those spaces that have solutions locally everywhere, but not globally, those will be isomorphic to the piece of Sha in this case. And moreover, we have maps going from these homogeneous spaces down to E prime to build back the weak Mordovay group. Similarly, you can do the whole thing over again with phi hat. If you do it with phi hat instead, then you get a very similar story, but now uh, you get information about this other uh, weak Mordovay group, and then you get information for the phi hat Selma group and for the piece or the corresponding piece of Sha. Okay. Um, okay, so what I want to do is just um, uh, work out uh, one example so you see this in action. Okay, so uh, we're going to take an elliptic curve E, uh, like before with one two torsion point. So I'm going to pick uh, X cubed plus 136 X, okay? This is isogenous via the two torsion point zero zero is isogenous to the curve E prime given by Y squared equals X cubed minus 544 X, which is in fact isomorphic um, to some elliptic curve with a simpler model, X cubed minus 34 X. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, for every uh, D, um, which is in this QS2, we're going to, um, there's going to be this diagram. We have E, okay, and we have a map uh, phi to E prime. Uh, we also have the corresponding phi hat going on the other direction. And then there's going to be homogeneous spaces, CD, that map through Psi D, which we defined down to E. And there are maps from homogeneous spaces CD prime down to E prime. Uh, and those are the Psi prime maps. Okay, here S, uh, the bad 
primes are the infinity primes, so just infinity. Uh, there is two and there is 17. So there is only those three. All right. So now what we have to do is to compute uh, the phi Selma group and the phi hat Selma group is to compute the homogeneous spaces where these points can come from and try to compute with those. All right. So it turns out that this map is given by. Um, so if this is uh, this is given by uh, the CD homogeneous spaces are simply Z squared equals D U to the fourth uh, plus 136 D V to the four for D's dividing 136, which is eight times 17. Uh, and they are square free. Okay. And the map psi of D in that case is uh, D U is square V is square um, D Z U V cubed. If you write this and um, yeah, yeah, there's a U and a V in there. So that, that's the map. And similarly, uh, C D prime is c is square equals d u to the fourth minus 34 uh, d v to the four um and here the d's divide 34 okay and d is square free okay and the map in that case uh actually i'm going to uh, write the map directly to e because i'm interested in points on e okay so the map uh, that goes all the way directly to E, that map is given by uh, Z is square, U is square, V is squared, and Z minus 34, V to the four minus D2, D is squared, um, U four over D U cubed, V cubed. Anyway, there are those maps. And now, um, for each D that is a square free dividing eight times 17, I get a space. So I get, for example, I get actually um, uh, for D equals one, U4 plus 136V to the four, uh, Z is square equals uh, two U to the four, for D equals two, I get uh, 17 U to the four plus eight V to the four, and uh, Z is square equals 34 U to the four plus four V to the four. And on the other side, I get spaces again, Z is square equals U is square minus 34 V to the four. Z is square equals two U to the fourth minus 17 V to the four. Z is square equals 17 U to the four minus two V to the four and Z is square equals 34 U to the four minus V to the four. I'm, uh, um, okay. So now, um, yeah, so some, some of those spaces that uh, would be automatically uh, not viable because of, um, uh, because of real, uh, problems, uh, I think I've already uh, removed. But in any case, you start looking through these spaces and try to identify points. And it turns out that, um, so there is, for example, in this space, there is a, a point 101, that point maps to uh, on E. So here is going to be E. Uh, this maps to uh, the point O. Okay, so this one maps to O. There is, in here, you can look that there is a point two, one, uh, 10, and this maps to a point um, 840 on E. Uh, here, there is a point 115, and this maps to a point um, uh, 17. 85. Um, here there is a point zero one two, and this maps to a point 
um, zero zero on E. Okay. Similarly, here there is a point one zero one, and this maps also to O. Um, but then I do not find a point on here. Okay, those are locally solvable, but I cannot find points. Uh, so they're locally solvable everywhere, but I'm unable to find points in there. So um, with a farther descent, you can actually show that those that are not coming, so the points, the spaces on the right or on the left, those all I found points. So they are locally solvable everywhere and they have global solutions. In here, only these one is locally solvable and give me a point. The other ones, I cannot decide what they are. With a farther descent, you can actually show that they are uh, parts of, um, of shell. So after completing this calculation, what you get is the following result. The result is that S phi hat of E prime over Q, it turns out to be um, two copies of Z mod two. And those come from those spaces on the left. So actually the, um, the Shaw part of that, there was nothing that was locally solvable, but not globally solvable. So uh, this actually gives you um, that there is nothing there. On the other hand, for the phi Selmer group, I ran into trouble. I still have that there are four spaces that are uh, locally solvable everywhere, but the Sha part, um, it turns out that, and, and again, I have not proved this, that would require a farther descent. It turns out that this is isomorphic to Z mod 2 cross Z mod 2. Okay. Then what you do is uh, use the exact sequences we have discussed before. So we had that the phi Selmer group, um, or that the this weak Mordelve group uh, embeds in the phi Selmer group, and then the co kernel is Sha the phi part of Sha. And uh, in this case, this is Z mod two plus Z mod two, but it is all uh, in Sha, and therefore the kernel must be trivial. So this implies that this must be zero. Okay, um, similarly, From the other exact sequence for the phi hat, you deduce that uh, E over Q of phi hat E prime over Q is isomorphic to Z mod two cross Z mod two, because in that case, the Sha is trivial. So in the log exact sequence that we had before um, in a previous video with uh, that relates these phi summer phi uh, weak model they groups i have a zero for one of them through uh, phi hat and i have a uh, two copies of z mod two on the other side on the other side and therefore, um, what this tells me is that the weak Mordova group is isomorphic to two copies of Z mod two, but there was only one two torsion point on my elliptic curve. This is just isomorphic to one copy, that point T, and this gives me that the elliptic curve over Q is actually isomorphic to uh, two torsion or the Mordelve group rather is isomorphic to two torsion, uh, just one or one point of order two and one point of infinite order. And the point of infinite order is actually 
um, the generators one can show that are zero zero of two torsion and eight forty of um, uh, of infinite order. By the way, eight forty was one of the ones that uh, appeared from one of the spaces. So we we got it from that homogeneous space. Um, that's where we got 840, which was one generator of infinite order. Okay. So this is another way of computing the Mordell Bay group. And this is it. Uh, so it's over. Um, um, I hope you learned something along the way. There is a lot more than one can say about elliptic curves. I didn't cover, for example, chapter nine on Silverman about uh, points, integral points on elliptic curves. And that is um, a very interesting proof of Siegel's theorem. And of course, there is a full second volume of uh, an elliptic curves where you, um, there's a lot to learn about the law representations, a lot to learn about uh, elliptic curves with complex multiplication, about modular curves, parameterizing elliptic curves with certain structures, um, and then farther topics like elliptic surfaces and so on, which is all uh, great, great stuff. So I will stop here and I hope um, that you watch other um, other graduate courses that maybe I'll put out in the future. Bye bye.